The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail.ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, today we're going to go and wrap up this chapter. So tonight we'll, the assignment will be 7.7 .7 and the chapter review. Tomorrow we'll review and Thursday you'll have your chapter 7 test. Before we move forward, are there any questions from either of you that you'd like to look at? No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll go ahead then and go on to the next section. So the first thing I want to do is look at some tables. And let me construct them here. It'll take longer to construct them than to actually just do the, the problems, but they have some important concepts that we're going to need to know. Let's see here. That, that, that. Yeah, this says snowmobile. This says four by four truck. This says R, R minus five, four, three, R times T equals D. Okay, so we have this formula, distance equals rate times time, or rate times time equals distance, okay? We have a snowmobile, and we have a four by four truck. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in these missing parts of the table based on what we're given. Now consider this, if distance equals rate times time, what would time equal? We would divide both sides by rate. So time would equal distance divided by rate. You okay with that? So for the time column, distance divided by rate. So this would be four divided by R. And this would be three divided by R minus five. Any questions about that? Not a big deal, but this is something we'll be using later in the problems we're going to work on. So any questions what I did there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take a look at another table. Let's see here. Here we've got the city savings bank. And here we have the credit union. And we've got the formula P times R times T equals I. This says R, this is R minus 0 0.02. This is a one and a one and a 50 and a 75. Okay, now we have the formula I equals PRT. Interest equals principal times rate times time. You might have encountered that in a pre algebra class like Math 75 or maybe in Math 85 if you took either of those courses. The interest is equal to the principal, the amount you invest, times the rate, so like a certain percent, uh, times the time. So in this table, we want to fill in the principal, okay? Well, if we take I equals PRT and we divide both sides by RT, we get I divided by RT equals P, okay? So I, so 50 divided by R times one, which is R, would go there. And then 
75 divided by one times the quantity R minus 0 0.02, which would be R minus 0 0.02. So those are the values you'd put in the table. Any questions about that? Okay, let's review how to convert from a percent to a decimal. So right, oops, not white, right, 9% as a decimal. It'd be 0 0.09, right? Everybody okay with that? Yes. All right, right, 0 0.035, as a per cent, and that would be what, 3.5%? So to change a percent to a decimal, drop the percent sign, move the decimal point two places to the left. To change a decimal to a percent, move the uh, decimal point two places to the right and add a percent sign. Okay, now, If a number is added to the numerator of five sevenths and twice as much is subtracted from the denominator, the result is eight. Find the number, okay. If a number is added to the numerator of five sevenths and twice as much is subtracted from the denominator, the result is eight. So our equation is gonna look like this. Let's call the number X. So twice as much would be two X. So if X is added to the numerator and twice X is subtracted from the denominator, the result is eight. Find the number. Are you okay with where I got that equation? I'll take that as a yes. All right, we're gonna multiply both sides by the denominator to clear the fraction. So on the left side, that crosses out and we have five plus X. On the right side, we've got 56 minus 16 X. I'm going to add 16x to both sides. So I get 17x plus five equals 56. I'm going to subtract five from both sides. So I get 17x equals 21. I'm going to divide both sides by, not 21, 51, sorry. Divide both sides by 17. So x equals three. So find the number three. Let's see if that works. Five plus three is eight. Two times three is six. Seven minus six is one. Eight over one is eight. Eight equals eight. So it checks. Any questions about that problem? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to another problem then. It says the top speed of a Dodge Charger, SRT8, is 33 miles per hour less than the top speed of the Chevy Corvette, Z06. At their top speeds, a Corvette can travel six miles in the same time that a charger can travel five miles. Find the top speed of each car. All right, so the first thing we need to figure out is what formula is behind this whole thing. We have speed 
So that's their rate. Six miles, that's their distance. And it says in the same time. So we've got distance equals rate times time. Okay. So it's going to be like, uh, like this formula that we looked at. All right. Okay. So let's make a table. We have, let's see here, the Dodge Charger and the Chevy Corvette. It says, the top speed of the Dodge Charger is 33 miles per hour less than the top speed of the Chevy. So if the Chevy speed is R, the Dodger's speed would be R minus 33. Again, the Dodge Charger is 33 miles per hour less than the Chevy Corvette. Okay. At their top speeds, a Corvette can travel six miles in the same time that the Charger can travel five miles. Now, let me read that again. At their top speeds, a Corvette can travel six miles in the same time that a Charger can travel five miles. Find the top speed of each car. We don't have anything about the time, except we actually do because it said in the same time. It said at their top speeds, a Corvette can travel six miles in the same time that the Charger can travel five miles. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a sort of an equal sign sideways there to imply that the times are equal in the same time. Okay, any questions about any of the information I have in the table? So distance equals rate times time. So if we divide both sides by rate, time equals distance divided by rate, okay? So for the Dodge Charger, the time equals the distance, which is five divided by the rate, which is R minus 33. For the Chevy Corvette, time equals distance divided by rate. So time equals six divided by R. But what do we know about the times? We know the times are equal. So from that, we get the following equation. Five over R minus 33 equals six over R because they are equal. So there's our equation that we're going to solve for R. The key to this whole thing was that the times were the same. So writing the times in terms of the information given, we set the times equal to each other. Okay? Now, the least common denominator would be R times R minus 33. So we're going to multiply both sides times R and R minus 33. On the left side of the equation, the R minus 33s cross out and we have five R. On the right side of the equation, the Rs cross out and we have six R minus 198, six times 33. Subtracting six R from both sides, we get negative R equals negative 198. Dividing both sides by negative one, R equals 198. Now, the question said, find the speed for each car, the top speed. So the Dodge is R minus 33. 198 minus 33 is 165. So 165 miles per hour. And the Chevy is R, so that's 198 miles per hour.
Questions about that? All right. Are we ready to go on to another problem yet? Or are you still absorbing this or writing it down? We're good. I'm good. My end. Okay. Everybody else? We're good. Okay. New problem. Boating. A boat that travels 18 miles per hour in still water can travel 22 miles downstream in the same time it takes to travel 14 miles upstream. Find the speed of the current in the river. Okay. Let's talk about the idea of still water versus current, okay? Let's say you're out in the middle of a lake. It's a very calm day. There's no wind, there's no current. You're just out there on the lake in a boat, okay? And you're rowing and you're capable of rowing, let's say, well, let's say you can row five miles an hour, all right? Now, suppose that there's a stream coming into this lake and as you approach the stream, you find that the current of the stream is against you because you're, you're trying to row upstream, okay? You're still rowing at a rate of five miles per hour up the stream. The current of the stream is traveling, let's say two miles an hour. So you're going upstream at five miles an hour, but the current is pushing against you at two miles an hour. What is your actual speed upstream? It would be the five minus the two or three miles an hour, right? Mm -hmm. So going yeah. upstream, the current would work against you. It would work against your ability to row. Now, let's say after a while you get tired of this and you turn the boat around and now you're rowing downstream. You're still rowing at five miles an hour, but the current is still moving at two miles an hour. Now, how fast are you actually going? Five plus two, right? So going with the current, with the wind, with the escalator, with whatever, it's gonna be added to your speed. Going against it, it's gonna be subtracted from your speed. Let's see how that works out. Okay, so it says a boat is traveling 18 miles per hour in still water. So a boat, a boat that travels 18 miles per hour in still water can travel 22 miles downstream in the same time as it takes to travel 14 miles upstream. Find the speed of the current in the river. Okay, so we've got distance, rate, and time. So this is gonna be a problem like the previous one, at least in part. Okay. Distance equals rate times time. And we've got, uh, let's see, downstream. And upstream. A boat that travels 18 miles an hour in still water can travel 22 miles downstream. In the same time, it can travel 14 miles upstream. So again, in the same time. Now, let's call the speed of the current, uh, let's call it R, okay? It says a boat travels 18 miles an hour in still water. So downstream, it's going to travel 18 miles an hour plus the speed of the current. Upstream, it's going to travel 18 miles an hour minus the speed of the current. Does that make sense? Yes. OK, now that's different from this last one here. It says the, so the charger was 33 miles an hour less than the Corvette. Here, we've got this boat capable of going 18 miles an hour, but then downstream, the current's gonna help it. So we add the current. Upstream, the current's gonna hurt it. So we subtract the current. Now, 
distance equals rate times time, divide both sides by R, time equals distance divided by rate. So time equals distance divided by rate, time equals distance divided by rate. But since the two times are equal, our equation becomes 22 over 18 plus R equals 14 over 18 minus R. Any question about where we got the equation? So now to clear the fractions, I'm gonna multiply both sides by 18 plus R times 18 minus R over here, 18 plus R times 18 minus R. On the left side, the 18 plus R's cross out and we have 22 times 18 minus R. On the right side, the 18 minus R's cross out and we have 14 times 18 plus R. Okay, distributing, let's see here. 22 times 18 is 396 minus 22R equals 14 times 18 is 252 plus 14R. I'm going to subtract 14R from both sides. I get negative 36R plus 396 equals 252. I'll subtract 396 from both sides. Negative 36R equals, let's see here, 252 minus 396 is going to be negative 144. Divide both sides by negative 36. And R equals 4. So the question said, find the speed of the current, which was R, so it would be four miles per hour. Any questions about that example? We good to go on or still need time to write it down? Let me know when you're ready. I'm done when there's word. I'm ready. Okay, you ready? All right, new problem. An amount of money invested for one year in a savings account will earn $1,500. That same amount of money invested in a mini mall development will earn $6,500 interest in a year because the interest paid is 10% more than that paid by the savings account. Find the rate of interest paid by each investment. Okay, so we've got money invested, that's principal interest, uh, rate, and the time. So this is I equals P times R times T. And we have the savings account and the mini mall. Okay. An amount of money invested for one year in a savings account, so the time is one year, 
will earn $1,500. So that's the interest. That same amount of money invested in a mini mall development will earn $6,500 interest in a year. It said that same amount of money. So the principles are equal. So we've got the interest and the time, and we know the principles, the same amount of money are equal. That same amount of money invested in a mini mall development will earn $6,500 in a year because the interest paid is 10% more than that paid by the savings account. So if the savings account rate is R, the mini mall is R plus 10%, which I'm going to write as a non-percent number, 0 0.10, okay? Because in the equation, it needs to be a non-percent. But if you're just asking specifically the percent, then you would write it as a percent. Any questions so far? All right, we have I equals PRT. The principles are the same and we need to find them. If we divide both sides by RT, we get P equals I divided by RT. So the principal for the savings account is I, which is 1500 divided by one times R, which is R. The principal for the mini mall is $6,500 divided by one times R plus 0.10, which is R plus 0.10. Since the principles are equal, our equation becomes 1,500 divided by R equals 6,500 divided by R plus 0.10. Any questions where I got the equation? All right, so the LCD would be R times the quantity R plus 0.10. So we're gonna multiply both sides times R times R plus 0.10. On the left side, the Rs reduce out and we have 1500 times the quantity R plus 0.10. On the right side, the R plus 0.10s uh, reduce out and we've got 6,500 times R or just 6,500 R. Distributing on the left, we get 1,500 R plus 150 equals 6,500 R. Let's subtract 1,500 R from both sides and we get 150 equals 5,000 R. Divide both sides by 5,000. R equals, let's see here, 150 divided by 5,000 is 0 0.03, which as a percent would be what? 3%. So it said, find the rate of interest paid by each investment. Savings account equals R, which is 3%. Mini mall equals 10% plus 3%, which is 13%. And there you have it. Any questions about that problem? All right, well, that's all I have for you today. So again, this wraps up the chapter. So tonight you've got 7.7 .7 and then try to get the review done so that if you have any questions on the review, we can look at those tomorrow. And then your test will be on Thursday. So I will be back at 1.15 this afternoon with an office hour. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.